list correct or not if an association signed in as I check that out. And so um, uh, both of you that raise questions plus anyone else that might have any, uh, my extension is 102. So um, you, you're welcome to give me a phone call and I can let you know what, uh, what I do find out. Um, so I, I try to keep very close track on that. So, uh, but I do apologize if I've got that all wrong. I occasionally get um, two of the associations turned around. So someone may have slipped through accidentally with credit. So the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, when you do send in your officers and delegates and cert report form, which is the form that I get the information for all the delegates from, when you send that in and I post that to the record, uh, what you send in on the new form completely replaces what's on the old form. So if you've had several people listed as delegates and you forget to mark them on the new form, they won't be there as delegates. So um, that's something that you want to keep in mind when you're sending those in. Um, and I'd be glad to check those if you have questions. Um, so uh, extension 102, that's all I've got this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on the sheet you turn in, please, one of the first acts you should take after your annual meeting is update that sheet. Um, uh, we make an assumption, if you don't put in a new one, we continue forward on the last one you submitted. It won't hurt, even if there's no change, to put it in, just to cross check and keep, keep us honest, all right? David. Good morning, nice to see a good turnout. And just to back up what Sandy does, it's a never ending job that she constantly works on and really keeps the books up to date. Uh, I help her out on occasion and uh, I'm sure we'll find uh, what we did wrong on this, if we did anything wrong, but uh, nothing else. I know we have a full schedule, David, so nothing else from me. Good morning. Um, just to continue, because that was one of the things I was going to talk about. Uh, when we have building issues, we go back to the records that we have. And uh, I can tell you, as one of the vice presidents, that we have or, uh, associations that have not updated their records for three, four, and five years. Um, I had a situation um, just within the last two weeks, one association that is showing five officers. One person has moved out of the village, the other two people are in their 90s and are no longer active, and they have one officer, which makes it an impossible for a building to do business. And it makes it almost impossible for UCO to help the associations or people in the associations to conduct business. So please update those records. If you're not sure, call any one of the vice presidents or Sandy, and we'll tell you the last time that you've updated your records. Um, on, on that note, um, I'm going to pass on, I'll reserve any other comments till later on. John. As you're, as you're all aware, we're two months into the hurricane season. As uh, Captain stated earlier, let's make sure you all have your, your uh, supplies and be ready for it. It's kind of redundant to keep repeating it over and over, but it's surprising how many people still don't have anything in. This is an example, the other day they had a, a water line break in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and one of the main lines, everybody lost their water, first thing they done, they all run to the grocery store to buy water. If you'd already had your hurricane supplies, you should have had plenty of water anyway for at least three days. So, just a little something to think about, that when, a, when the time comes, the, the grocery store shelves are going to be empty. So get it while there's plenty out there. Thank you. Oh, Stuart. Oh, you want to go? Uh, no, I got nothing. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, recognize the uh, people who use the Camden Pool. They are a terrific bunch of people. They keep the pool really well. They let me know when anything is going on that has to be repaired. Uh, 
They advise me of uh, what is going on there, my eyes and ears in Century Village. They let me know what they like and what they don't like, and sometimes they're very vocal and uh, scream and holler, but I listen to everything. And it's this, this type of person living in Century Village, this group, uh, just terrific. And I appreciate everything they tell me and the way they keep the pool and follow the rules. I have to give them this uh, recognition in front of the delegate assembly because I think they deserve it. Uh, we talked about the budget, and uh, we're going to be voting on the contract that's coming up for the uh, roadway and the fence. When we spend your money, and it's your money and mine, we want to do it judiciously. And so the fence that we're putting up is a compromise between uh, the different proposals that were made to us. But the other thing is that we're going to put in uh, a hedge that will cover the fence and show, be shown on the inside of Century Village. For those, we're going to get a, a, a hedge that will give us the biggest bang for the buck and is one that is used throughout Palm Beach County. If you drive along a jog road going south towards, we'll say, 10th Avenue, and you look on the left side of the street, the east, I guess that's the way they do it here, uh, you will see eight foot hedges that completely disguise the fence, but it's so thick that it provides us a visual protection from what goes on in the golf course. And it's really not very expensive, considering the length uh, that we're going to cover. If anybody wants to see what this looks like and what it would cost, please come in to Yuko, and I'll be glad to show them pictures of uh, what we're going to put there. And the last note, the Beautification Committee is the committee that goes around Century Village doing the plantings to make this place look pleasing to your eye. We need additional people on the committee, and I encourage you, if you have a green thumb or any good ideas, please come in and join us, because it's you, the volunteer, that helps us make Century Village what it is. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Ed. I'm going to pass. We have so much on the table today. Let's get it started. Okay. Uh, Cam Cam, briefly. Same here. <laughs> Same thing, okay. Uh, thank you all uh, for your reports. And yes, um, do we have anyone who has turned in the, their clickers? All right, so our quorum is still good at 140. No one has left. Uh, first thing I want to bring up uh, which really I wish had been done earlier, uh, but we were suffering from exigencies of lack of quorum, uh, is the appointment of uh, Dom Gornagia uh, to serve out the unexpired term of Louise Warner, who resigned as vice president of UCO. Dom, Dominic, I'm sure everyone knows Dom. Uh, are you here? All right. Thanks, Dom. He's hard to miss. Looks like a redwood tree. Um, uh, so I would entertain a motion to uh, ratify this nomination. Marilyn Gorditzer. Uh, who seconded it? Joyce Reese? Oh, thank you. All right. Is there any further discussion on this? I didn't think there'd be much discussion. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, will you please uh, operate your clickers appropriately to express your will? <laughs> uh, Ken Graff made some modifications on this. Can everybody see this pretty well, even even in the back? Uh, okay. Who said no? I mean, really, if, if, if you're really far, far back and can't see it, you, you could come forward. There's plenty of seats. All right. 
<laughs> yeah, well, not, sometimes people don't push their clickers. Okay, we'll wait a few seconds. Has everyone voted who intends to vote? All right, check your clicker, make sure the green light is on. If it doesn't come on, it may need a battery. All right, call it. Well, um, well, Dominic, you, you appear to have a few friends out there. Uh, so Dom is overwhelmingly confirmed. And welcome, Dominic. All right. Um, last month, we handed out a sheet from our attorney on the issue of suing uh, the Office of Economic, of Equal Opportunity. Pardon me on that. Um, as you may recall, the, um, the department is hawking us on installation of wheelchair lifts on our buses. And that's not what we're here to discuss. That will be discussed at another time. Believe me, it will come up when budget time comes around and we have to consider the, the contract we have. It, it's, got, it's got some time to run. The issue is we're, we're seeking, Rod thinks we should seek a state declaratory judgment that uh, tells these people, one, they don't have jurisdiction in here over our transportation system. All right, uh, how one might equate buses to housing, to me, is a very arcane and, and, and difficult argument to make. So you've had this piece of paper for a month, and so we would like to have a vote on this. Should we go forward at an initial cost of $25,000 to file um, an action against uh, OEO? All right. Would anyone like to make such a motion? Sir. Okay, the motion that he stated was positive that we sue OEO. Paul Goldfarb. Is there a second for this? George Franklin. Is there any further discussion on this. There was a bit of discussion last month till we lost our quorum, so, but we have to finish that up before yeah. we vote. Hey, just yes, a, Dan? Yeah, just a question. Uh, the, uh, the loss that uh, we're doing, is this because somebody is suing us, or is it uh, we're putting them as a third party, or yeah, anything? Yeah, uh, this, this is a very good question. It, it, it's kind of remotely related. I hate to throw people's names around on an active lawsuit, but yes, a person who is wheelchair bound, could not use the bus, and is threatening to sue us in federal court. Threatening. The suit has not, in fact, been filed. Um, you've been around a long time. You know there was a former case, the Carmelin case, in 2004, identical. Wheel, a uh, woman, wheelchair bound. And we made a conciliation with OEO, which they have chosen to ignore, that we would help people, not with wheelchairs, with canes, with walkers, with packages, which we have done religiously for 15 years. Um, OEO, the current OEO, which by the way, I believe is an organ of the county commission, I mentioned that in passing, uh, cho <laughs> ch chose to ignore this. Didn't even mention it, the Carmelin case. And that's another reason Rod wants to bring an action against OEO. Uh, I, I mean, we get documents from them that would curl your hair. You'd th you, you think they were generated by Adela the Hun. You know, I, by the power vested in me, as queen of the known universe, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, and what is your defense? So this is why Rod thinks we, you know, the little yapping dog ought to bark back. 
Okay? But remember, you know, Olga was up here last month, and I agree with what she said. You know, we're told $25,000. We know where these cases can go. You, you, you know, you get a lawyer involved, and the money just goes metastatic. So you got to consider both sides of this. Olga, you're up. This is from the um, Carmelin case. The Palm Beach County Office of Equal Opportunities participation in this agreement does not reflect any judgment by OEO on the merits of the complaint. Furthermore, this is important, the Palm Beach County Office of Equal Opportunity does not waive its right to process any other or subsequent complaint, including a complaint filed by the director OEO against the respondent. This is from the original Carmelin case and settlement. There is another complaint. Therefore, $25,000 lawyer fee to pay an attorney to uphold the original complaint is useless. If you vote yes, you will be throwing $25,000 right out the window. I want you to think about it. Seriously, this is just a waste of money. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. Jean. First of all, OEO wasn't present many years ago, and those people with handicaps had a very difficult time. Tomorrow, any one of us could be in a wheelchair and would need the transportation. So I think fighting something that is good for people and helps the handicap is certainly not a good idea. Secondly, as far as the buses go, it is in the bus contract that um, the company provides the uh, money to retrofit the buses. We would have to pay for the equipment and they would put it on. So it's not a big amount of money. It's uh, very inexpensive for our six buses. Uh, certainly that $25,000 would pay for a good part of it. So I would be very much against fighting OEO. I think OEO protects all of us. All right, uh, just one comment, and, and this information came in very recently. We, we've been working, um, uh, Donald has been trying, and finally we got a response from the bus company. The current fleet cannot be retrofit. You would never get a permit that the whole structural integrity of the bus with wheelchair capability is different. We would have to get new buses at $95,000 a pop, times seven in the fleet. And then we can discuss all this. Maybe all, I, I understand there's gonna be a, a dozens of arguments. Maybe we won't retrofit them all, but this is for another day. I'm just saying, we would have to get new buses if, if ultimately we decide to go with ADA compliant buses. Um, and they're $95,000 a pop right now. Uh, so retrofitting the current fleet is, not out, is out of the question. Now that might be offset by a trade-in. Uh, the estimate is we can get 15K for, for each current bus. Yes, Jean. Yes, uh, they can be retrofitted. It yeah. costs a little more than the ones with the doors in the back, but the ones without the doors can be retrofitted for about $120,000 per bus. 90,000, you get a new one. I can get, <laughs> Jean, I can get a new one for 95K. <laughs> okay. Hello. Are you, you sure you got the number right? Hello. It's 25,000 per bus, I'm sorry, 124. All right, all I can tell you is we have the email. You're welcome to a copy. The, the, the guy from the bus company says, in essence, it's just not, it's not really feasible to retrofit the current buses. Uh, yes, Barbara, is that yes, you? Yes, it's me and my bell slicker. Good morning, delegates and residents. I'm not here to talk about the buses or retrofitting or handicap. We're here for one question. Right. Do you want to sue OEO? 
Right. Now that's a government agency. They got deep pockets, and their pockets come into our pockets because we're taxpayers. I think you'll be wasting maybe 25,000, maybe 50,000, maybe 75. You don't know the exact amount it's going to cost you. So I don't think it's a good idea. And you should consider it very carefully to sue OEO. The buses, that's another story. We're here on one topic. Do we sue OEO? And I please plead to you, think about it carefully. I think you're making a big mistake to sue our government agency. Thank you. All right, Myron. Yes, I have some information that I think the delegates would find very interesting. I'd like to read it, please. In the event that the United States Department of Transportation determines that the buses must be wheelchair accessible, or if it's determined that applicable federal, state, or local laws require that the buses must have wheelchair equipment or other such accommodations installed, then the operator will provide for the installation of equipment, including wheelchair lifts, subject to the client, covering the cost of such equipment, and that the operator covering the cost of the installation and maintenance of such equipment. Now, I think, unfortunately, I didn't get something that I was supposed to get in the mail. I have a friend that lives in Pembroke Pines, Century Village. I don't know if it's information that the delegates have readily available, but Pembroke Pines has seven buses with wheelchair equipment in them for eight years already. We're way behind the times here. Just think, if you came here 20 years ago, and what's going to happen when you need a helping hand? We will be here to help you if you let us. Thank you. All right. Um, Myron, save that thought and please inject it into our deliberations at the Finance Committee on Budget. Okay? I, I, I feel from what you're saying and what Gene well, is saying. Be careful. But the issue here is... The issue here is, shall we or shall we not sue OEO? Please don't spin off into the pros and cons of ADA compliance of the buses. Shall we or shall we not sue OEO? Okay. And I, I believe we should sue them. First of all, you do have a prior case. Secondly, we are blessed in this community because we have the connection bus, and anyone with a serious handicap is entitled to use that to go anywhere in the entire county of Palm Beach. So why on earth would we want to limit ourselves to spending a great deal of money on, bu on retrofitting buses for the limited area we cover where these same people, including myself, can happily use the connection bus? Everyone, you know, that, you may know this as Palm Tran Connect. And what was just said is absolutely right. Um, this individual could get point to point pick up and, and, and drop. Yes, Ed? I, uh, there's nobody there, right? Okay, I would just like to answer this young lady that just made this statement. If you didn't use Palm Beach transportation, you don't know what happens with it. I used it for two years. You make an appointment, you have a window of 30 minutes either way, 15 and 15. When you wait for the buses, you could wait an hour. I've had occasion when the buses never showed up. I was stuck at the airport once for four hours. I was stuck at the kennel club for three hours. It's a wonderful service when it works. It doesn't always work wonderful. Now. You want, this, you want this service to come and pick you up at your apartment and take you to the clubhouse for a show. So you're going to wait an hour, an hour and a half for Palm Beach Transportation to come and pick you up. 
and then another hour, hour and a half to take you back. That's nonsense. That's nonsensical. That's not a service for the people in the village to use for the clubhouse and all, all right. the facilities here. Again, can we please stick to the issue on the agenda? Well, I answered this one. Your arguments are fine, but not at this time. Why didn't you tell him that? Shall we or shall we not sue OEO? Please stick to that topic. We're starting to lose people. And, and if we lose our quorum again, this, this has to drag forward yet for another month. All right? I just want to tell you my vote is definitely no. A waste of money. Oh, Jesus. Okay. We'll, we'll, hopefully we'll get to the vote sometime before the next glacial advance. Yes, Ed. I don't think we should just rush this, Mr. Israel. We're not this, rushing anything. Well, you said the glacier. I, let's not get to that. The basic thing is you said you had a month to read it, to extend it, to study it. Well, I did. And I could tell you that my, to start off with, because I once read a book on sales, always ask for the order first. The order is don't vote. The, don't vote. Vote no to sue. Why? Because the facts of the case that is being used to be upheld doesn't hold water. And the arguments made by Mr. Tennyson in the past in 2004 does not hold water. And as a correction, ADA has zero, zero to do with anything in the buses here because ADA, which I spoke to, only talks about the public. This organization, us, goes under HUD. And if you look the cases, those cases went to HUD. Now I was in contact not only with HUD, but OEO. OEO is definitely maintained that the Kemmerlin case clearly